Well, joining us now is retired Major General Michael Repass. He served as commander of U.S. Special Operation Forces in Europe. Good to have you with us. Thank you, Linda. I appreciate the opportunity today. So I want to start with this claim from Ukraine that they've retaken a key town on the outskirts of the capital. Um, it certainly seems very significant given how Russia was trying to encircle uh, the capital. Uh, and certainly it must be a morale boost for Ukrainians. Well, you're absolutely right. It is a morale boost. But more importantly, it shows that Ukraine's capable of generating sufficient combat power to go out and do local counterattacks. Uh, the city itself... Uh, it's rather small, but the point is, is that they were able to get out there and maneuver and, and uh, destroy the enemy out there and take the city back. It also shows that they're very uh, interested in, in, in uh, maintaining the flow of supplies from western Ukraine into Kiev. Uh, this town is west of Kiev. It's on, along a uh, main artery of transportation, and that attack enables them to uh, secure that shoulder out there and make sure supplies, both humanitarian and military can get into Kiev. And we have heard confirmation from the United States, from the president, that Russia has used a hypersonic missile. Uh, that seems to be the, a weapon that's impossible to stop, to intercept, right? Yes, it is. Uh, the speed is uh, fantastic in, in excess of uh, Mach 5, potentially, uh, maybe as high as uh, Mach 10 plus. Uh, so it is not possible to, to launch a, an interceptor uh, to get after that problem set. I think the psychological impact is uh, perhaps uh, more significant than the uh, actual uh, munition itself. While it does cause a, uh, a big explosion and, and great damage on the ground, uh, what has happened is Russia has introduced a new capability to the battlefield that nobody has the ability to defeat. Uh, that in itself has a, I would say, a... a positive uh, psychological effect for the Russians and negative, obviously, for the Ukrainians. Uh, but its actual military value uh, may be somewhat limited in that, that it, it explodes. Uh, we don't know how many of these things he has. Uh, so we don't know how long they can keep that up. So looking at the losses on both sides, obviously it's still very hard to get uh, true numbers on e casualties on either side. Uh, but we did see a, a tabloid in Russia publish a figure close to 10,000 Russian troops uh, reportedly killed. Uh, the website later claimed it was hacked. Uh, but that number is in line with what U.S. intelligence have been reporting, which, which seems credible and must be quite demoralizing for Russia. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Uh, so let's let's walk through the numbers real quick. Uh, so the U.S. intelligence community estimates somewhere around 7,000, maybe a little bit higher, Russian casualties. Uh, the media that was released online in Russia said it was 10,000. And then the Ukrainians themselves say the number's uh, north of 15,000. So let's assume that 10,000 is about accurate, uh, maybe 11,000. That is higher than the entire U.S. casualties from both Iraq and Afghanistan after mm -hmm. 20 years. That's also higher than the entire uh, killed in action from the Russian adventure in Afghanistan over 10 years. So the number is very substantial. In less than four weeks, they've lost somewhere north of 10,000 people. Wow. Uh, this certainly hasn't gone the way Russia had it expected. I mean, any sort of Every analyst around the time of this invasion, almost a month ago, said uh, Putin was going in hoping to take Ukraine relatively quickly. We're now into almost a month of this war, casualties rising, and it seems like there isn't, hasn't been much advance of, on, of Russian trips towards the capital. No, absolutely not. Uh, so a couple of things are going on. Uh, the first one is uh, he somewhat culminated with his first echelon of forces. His initial push in there, uh, he's run through those forces. Some, some are combat ineffective, quite frankly, because of the uh, Ukrainian punishment that they put on the uh, Russian troops. Combat losses are somewhere between 20 and 25 percent, maybe higher. In some units, they've been completely destroyed. So what Putin's doing now is he is doing individual replacements. Uh, in some cases, he's bringing units in from the Far East, Central Asia, around Moscow and out of the Northwest. Uh, but those units won't get there in, in, in the near term. They need another week or so to get there. However, his 
combat capabilities are going down for every day he spends in Russia uh, due to attrition from the uh, Ukrainians themselves and also just uh, the ineffectiveness of putting new recruits or fresh troops, uh, people that aren't familiar with the unit. There's no u unit cohesion. They don't know how the unit works. So the effectiveness of the forces that he has in the country is going down. Uh, at the same time, uh, the Ukrainian side has the uh, opposite going on. They're getting people coming in across the borders, about 16,000 a day, 80% of whom are military-age males, uh, particularly those that are those are available to join the armed forces and the territorials. Uh, so their strength is going up. And as long as the West continues to arm them, the Ukrainian forces will continue to regenerate at a higher rate than the Russians are being replaced. Mm. Wow. Major, retired Major General um, Michael Repass, good to get your perspective. I appreciate your time today. Have a great day. Thank you, Linda.